What's going on folks? My name is Chris and in this video I'm going to show you how you can day trade using just one monitor which is contrary to popular belief where everybody's showing off their fancy day trading setups with three monitors, five monitors, ten monitors or even a hundred monitors. In this video I'm going to show you my setup using my laptop using only one monitor explain to you how I use only one screen to get lots of different tasks done including day trading and we're going to show different layouts that i use in my own trading now the thing is about this i'll tell you in advance a lot of my stuff in my trading is custom so i'm going to share with you guys some chart books if you guys want the chart books on sierra chart or, or interactive brokers i'll give those to you just know that on my sierra chart layouts there's custom indicators that you can't get access to right now maybe in the future i'll release them but not right now so this is what it's all about. If you enjoy this content, let me know down below, press the like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and let me know what kind of content you wanna see. In this video, we're talking about day trading using just one monitor. So in front of me, I have an Asus laptop with an aspect ratio of 16 by 10, which means it has a little bit more uh, vertical space. The average desktop monitor that you might buy or use uses a 16 by nine aspect ratio, which is actually what you're watching this in right now. And I'm purposely recording my screen in 16 by nine, just so you can see what that looks like. It looks more cinematic, but when I'm using my laptop for productivity and for trading, I set the aspect ratio to 16 by 10, which is actually what the display size is. And the reason why I like 16 by 10 is because you get more vertical space which basically means more screen real estate, more space on the screen. One of the main reasons why I think it's good to trade using only one screen or two screens at most is because of focus. And I've experienced this a lot in the past when I used to use multiple screens, more screens, is that your eyes are constantly going from one place to another and you can get confused easily. And I find that when I'm working with one screen, one monitor, I'm typically more focused. I'm looking at less things and I can focus on them for longer when I only have one screen. When there's other screens to the left and to the right, I typically can lose focus faster and it can just arise in more confusion. Another thing is, while I'm on that topic, the telephone. One thing about the telephone is that when you keep your phone in your physical plane of view, it's kind of distracting you at all times, even if the screen is off because you're so used to looking at that display and often the display is reflective. So just it being in your field of view causes you more confusion or it has the possibility to take away from your focus. You guys understand what I'm saying? So typically with my phone, when I'm not using it, I put it outside of my field of view, typically behind me like that. And I keep only what's important in front of me. I'm going to go ahead and show you now how I have everything set up using only one monitor, which is my laptop screen right here. Okay. So let's go over to the laptop screen. You can see I have Sierra chart here. This is one installation of Sierra chart that I use strictly for trading. And in this installation, I have different chart books that are consisting of charts for trading. These are not historical charts. These are intraday charts where I'm looking at tick by tick data and I can place execution orders here. So for an example, if I click on this market depth, you can see there's a new order, there's bracket orders, and I can move the bracket orders using one click of the mouse, which is a custom study that I've developed in Sierra Chart. It's absolutely 100% free. You can just download it by going to my GitHub repository. It works very well. So that's an example of a simple order placement. I'll cancel the order now. And if you're wondering why the order uh, didn't show up on the order book, it's because I have the order placement set up to send the orders to the micros. And this is the chart for the minis. This is S&P E-mini futures, but I have my orders being routed to the micro contract. And that's done in Sierra chart using something called trade only symbol. Okay, so here's a layout that I would use for trading US Treasury futures on Sierra chart. Um, as you can see, I have four charts and these are basically so I can keep track of the last few trades that are taking place in these markets. So if I'm trading the 10 year treasuries, I'm often watching the five year treasuries as well as the 30 year treasuries at the same time. And now getting to the more important part, 
a lot of my trading is based on contextual levels that I get from historical charts. So my historical charts are on a different installation of Sierra chart, which are right here. So how do I get to my historical charts if I'm only on one monitor? Well, I use a magic keyboard shortcut called Alt-Tab. So Alt-Tab, and I cycle through them like that. So I'm on my trading charts, and now I'm on my historical charts. And you can see, this is pretty much the layout that you would expect to see uh, for historical charts. I have eight charts in total with four different symbols, four daily charts and four 15 minute charts for those four symbols. So as an example, 30 year daily chart, 30 year 15 minute chart, 10 year daily chart, 10 year 15 minute chart. And then the same thing for the five year and the two year. Okay, if we're looking at something like indices, it would look like this, NASDAQ, S&P 500, Russell 2000, and the Dow Jones 30, okay? And if you're wondering what all those lines are on the chart, I'm not gonna explain it because it's a custom indicator and it would take a whole other video in itself to explain. But basically, it's called supply demand zones, but it's my own version of it that has its own sort of calculation and it operates on multiple time frames, monthly, weekly, daily, and intraday if I want to also. And these levels are color coded based on if they're new levels that haven't been tested or if they have already been tested. So what you're looking at is lines that exist on multiple time frames that are all being overlaid onto those onto that one time frame, which in this case is a daily chart. But I can actually hide some of the levels if I want to as well. So that's pretty much how I would arrange my charts. Now you can do this in pretty much any software. You don't have to use Sierra chart. So for example, if I go over to Interactive Brokers Trader Workstation, I'm gonna have to blur out account numbers here. But here's an example of a layout for execution. You can have the book trader where you can place your orders here, or you can also place your orders on the quote monitor itself. And then if I go over to another layout, this would be pretty much the equivalent for charts. As you can see here, I have six charts. You can do six charts or eight charts. I think it would fit eight charts just fine. And in this case on Trader Workstation, I'm using advanced charts, which is a new widget that they added which is basically an integration to TradingView charts. So it's basically TradingView charts inside of Interactive Brokers Trader Workstation. But for you guys who are just starting out and you wanna just get a, a basic feel, and because TWS is a free software, I would say this is something good to get started with just to get an idea of like how the markets are moving and you can put basic indicators on those things as well. Most of the reason why I use Sierra chart is because I'm at a stage in my trading where a lot of the stuff I've developed is custom and I sort of went on a journey and I'm still on that journey where I have certain models that I've been building and working on uh, regarding you know how I view the markets and perceive the markets and, and also automating certain things in the trading so that a lot of it is done automatically and I just have to press a couple buttons and the calculations are done automatically. And then I can focus on the discretionary aspect and the decision making and making sure I'm in um, an adequate psychological state to make good decisions. You understand what I'm talking about? So that's what trading is. So, you know, in TWS, you would use the mosaic layouts to kind of switch between them. So at the bottom here, here's an example of one that you could use for options trading, just an option chain, a chart, and a quote monitor where you can click and drag options contracts into and then execute on those options contracts like that. But again, I'd probably do it using a trading DOM or a book trader. If I was actively trading these options, I would most probably be using a book trader kind of like this where you can see the active quote of whatever contract or market that you're trading. So this is basically how I do it on one monitor, guys. You can see I have my installation for my charts and then I alt tab over to my trading execution chart. And you know, it's not really much more complex than that. It's just basically going back and forth. So if I'm looking for certain levels, I'm scouting for a certain trade setup, I'm looking at the historical chart and I have the levels kind of like in my short term memory. So earlier in the session today, I had a few trades on 10 year and five year treasuries. And there was a moment where I was both long and short at the same time. And if the five year was gonna reclaim a certain price on the downside, I was gonna go start going short on the five year to hedge my long position that I was long on the 10 year. And the only reason I do that is because that's exactly how my system is, is laid out. So I have certain levels where 
I'm long until XYZ happens. So I'm long until proven otherwise. When the market proves me otherwise, I either start reversing and going short or I just go flat, depending on the time of day, depending on the volatility and depending on if I have enough bullets left in the chamber. You know what I mean? So I might have been watching 24-5 on the 10-year. I was also watching 9 on the 30-year. So certain levels like that. So what I would be doing is I'm memorizing these levels from my historical charts and then I'm going over to my trading DOM execution chart and I'm watching how the market is going and trading against those levels. So right now, the 30-year just traded at 114.9 as I'm recording this. That's a general explanation of how I go about it. I have the levels memorized in short term for the different markets, the most important levels on multi time frames. They could be weekly, daily, monthly, or even intraday levels that are of importance. And I deem them of importance based on my trading system. Okay, because some of you guys are going to say, well, how do you know those things even work? Or it's all bullshit, whatever. It doesn't matter. Maybe it's bullshit to you, but it's stuff that exists in my studies. And the reason I use them is because I have experience using them. And those are the things that I operate. Those are the parameters that I operate within. So if you would ask me, do you think one monitor is enough? I would say absolutely yes. So I don't have to go around and do a lot of tinkering and like looking and clicking. A lot of it is already done. The most of the clicking that I have to do is alt tabbing between the chart and the DOM. Maybe full screening a chart every now and then examining a chart like this. Switching between chart books, if I want to look at different markets, I might want to look at what the US dollar is doing or what the Canadian dollar is doing. And then I'll switch back and I'm looking for markets that are active. So basically, I'm switching between indices, bonds, oil, depending on the day, depending on the volatility, depending on the context. US dollar against the Canadian dollar is a market that I watch quite frequently and Bitcoin as well as a market that I started watching frequently. So I'm using keyboard shortcuts in, in Sierra chart to switch between the chart books. So I'm using F8 to cycle forward through the chart books. And I do the same on the trading DOM installation. I'm using F8. You can see now I switched over to trade DOM execution chart for indices. You, you see I have ES, NASDAQ and Russell 2000. And I can cycle between the chart books for trading that way. You know, you could make the argument and say you could have separate monitors for separate markets in the case that you're watching multiple markets at once, you know, but then you can also make the argument that the more displays you have to look at, the more it can increase the chances that you become confused because you have too much information to look at. Maybe you can get fatigue as well from having just so many things that you're looking at at all times. Whereas I find if I show up and I have my laptop display here and I know that everything is there, all the information I need is right there and I have this one display that I can focus on, I just find it a lot more efficient. Now, I have experimented with different things. I used to trade with three monitors, then I downsized to one and I traded with that. I was traveling for a while and that's how I got used to this one monitor setup. And when I got back from traveling, I started experimenting with two monitors again. And what I realized is that I didn't really need that second monitor. So I'm back to one monitor now and I actually enjoy it. Yeah, so let me know what you guys think of this one monitor layout, guys. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. I'd love to hear your comments down below. How many monitors do you use? Thank you for watching. Cheers.